Hey, Divine Ones, how y'all doing? Come on in, come on in. All my Divine Ones, come on in, come on in, baby. So I only have a few minutes, but I just wanted to pop on with y'all, baby, bring y'all a quick message, bring y'all a quick word. I am holding my newest baby. <laughs> I am holding my newest baby that I just gave birth to, baby. The Divine One's 90-day journal that has officially launched, that is officially now live on Amazon, and it's available for you to purchase it. So you a Divine One, baby. I want you to go on, snatch this thing up. Look, it's big, it's sturdy, it's hard cover, because that's the way I like my journals, baby. I like my journals with a lot of space, a lot of room that's nice and comfortable for me to open up and, and journal and write in it. So y'all go get y'all Divine Ones 90-day journal, baby, okay? Inside the journal, you're going to see a place for you to write down your schedule so you keep track of, you know, if you old school like me, okay? You keep track of all your appointments and everything that you got scheduled for that day, your top three things that you got to get done that day. You got that space on here. You got a space for, for some notes. Write you some notes down. You got you a workout log right there, baby. So um, right after I finish this video with y'all, I'm actually going to get ready to go to the gym and work out. So look, I'm going to put that in my journal. Okay. I'm going to write, I'm going to track that thing in my Divine Ones 90-day journal. Okay. So yes, yes, baby. We have Divine Stationery. We have Divine Stationery. And the blue ink pens are coming soon. <laughs> the blue ink pens are coming soon, baby. But for right now, we got the journals. This is actually like a planner slash journal. And it's a part of a series that I'm going to be launching. So, well, the series has already started. This is the first book that's in the series. And there's going to be some other journals and books and planners that I'm going to be launching for y'all. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for that. You can go to my website, baby. It's at IamLatoyaOkeel.com. Uh, and when you go to the storefront, the Amazon storefront, the shop page, you'll see the books. Okay, this is my newest baby. Y'all got to hold my baby. I'm proud of my baby. <laughs> I'm proud of my baby. Okay, so, all right, let's get right on into the message, baby. This is what I want to drop on y'all real quick, then I got to get going. Listen, I did a video about this a little while ago, and God said, bring that thing back again. He said, bring that thing back again. He said, do not get stuck. Somebody put this in the comments, say, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. I hear the Lord say, do not get stuck where God used to be. Do not get stuck where the presence of God used to be. Do not get stuck on a has-been season in your life, a has-been product in your life, a has-been thing in your life. If God ain't moving in that no more, if you ain't seen no growth in that, since 1995, you ain't seen no transformation in that. It's still broke, busted, and disgusted. But you hung up on that one season that things was amazing, that one season that things were great, but you ain't seen no growth since then. Listen, God say, don't get stuck. That's it, baby. Say, I can't get stuck. I got to get my transformation. I got to get everything that God have for me. I can't afford to be stuck. I can't afford to be stagnant. That's what I hear God saying, baby. He says, you cannot afford to be stuck. You cannot afford to be stagnant. You cannot afford to stand still in the same place. Every day, you got to be growing. Every day, you got to be learning. Every day, you got to be evolving. And your growth might not look like somebody else's growth. But that don't mean you ain't growing. Okay. That's for somebody. That's for somebody, baby. Because you got to make sure that you're not comparing yourself and that you're in competition with other people. And you're looking at how they're growing. You're looking at how they evolve. And you're looking at how they they making leaps and bounds in the spirit. And you thinking that that's, that's saying that you ain't getting no well. That you ain't making no progress. Listen, even if it's a baby step. Is progress. Do you understand me? Even if it wasn't nothing but a half a pound that you lost, it's still progress. Even if it wasn't nothing but, well, I told you, I, I used to be lying all the time, but I don't tell all them lies like I used to tell, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm more truthful now. I start telling the truth. Look, you got to take every bit of transformation that you can get, baby, because your growth ain't going to look like somebody else's. 
and theirs ain't going to look like yours. But that don't mean that you ain't growing and that don't mean they ain't growing. I hear God say the worst place that you can find yourself is where God used to be. I want y'all to listen to me. The worst place that you can find yourself is where the Holy Spirit used to be. It's where the presence of God used to be. Y'all ever heard people say, oh, well, that such and such, no, they can preach. Oh, we had a good church service over there. We had a good pastor's anniversary last year, and we had a good celebration, and that thing was on point, baby. We did this, we did that last year. But then you ain't seen no growth since that event. You ain't seen no transformation in that building since that event. Come on now. The people's lives are not being changed. There is no fruit. There is no evidence of transformation nowhere. The worst place that you can find yourself is where God used to be. Listen, the Holy Spirit, I want y'all to know a few things about the Holy Spirit and understand a few things about God's Spirit. His Spirit is never stagnant. Listen to me. His spirit is never stagnant. His spirit is never stuck. His spirit is never complacent. Holy Spirit is always moving. He's always moving. Come on now. The Holy Spirit is always evolving. It's always, when you got the spirit, let me tell you how you know you got, you walking with the Holy Spirit because that thing won't let you be complacent. That thing won't let you be stuck. You can, you can think that you done arrived and you comfortable in that place that you in. But when you walking with the spirit of God, baby, when the spirit of God is in that place, God will tell you, uh, uh. Uh -uh, it's time to take it up a notch. It's time to have a revival. It's time to have a refresher. It's time to get a new dip in the spirit. You've been working this old thing too long. It's time to shake things up. It's time to innovate. It's time to renovate. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come on now. And God says that anytime that you are dwelling in a place with people, with friends, in relationships, connections, ties of any kind, anytime you start dwelling in them in them places, baby, and the spirit of God ain't there, he said it's just like being in the graveyard. It's just like being in the graveyard. I remember I did a live about this. Matter of fact, it was one of the biggest live streams that I ever did on my YouTube channel. I want y'all to go watch this video. That's going to be your homework, part of your homework from today. I want you to go and find that video on my YouTube channel. It's called Know When the Presence of God Has Left. You got to know when the presence of God has left. You got to know when God ain't in that thing no more, when God done checked out from that. And how many of us, oh baby, because I know I have, look, I testify, Reverend, how many of us done been in situations where we pulling out the crash cart, we trying to revive stuff, we trying to bring stuff back to life, we trying to shock the life back into it, but it ain't no energy there, there is no life force there, there is no light, it ain't nothing but darkness, it ain't, no, it ain't no transformation, it ain't no growth, but we still caught up on how we used to feel love there, how we used to feel cared for there, how we used to feel the warmth of the Holy Spirit, how we used to feel the presence of God. But you got to ask yourself, when was the last time I had that feeling? When was the last time I felt like I was on fire for God? When was the last time I heard a word that caused me to get up and live? When was the last time I heard a teaching, I heard a sermon that lit a fire on the inside of me? And it made me want to get up and create something for the kingdom of God. It made me want to get up and serve and use my gifts. It made me want to seek the kingdom of God with everything in me. Glory be to God. Because see, I done been... In places, baby, where I was just going through the motions. I'm just going through the motions. I'm just going to this place because that's that's where mama and them went. That's where my auntie and them going. That's where my cousin and them going. This what everybody said we supposed to do. We supposed to dress up and we supposed to go to this place every week. We supposed to worship like this. We supposed to congregate like this. We supposed to fellowship like this. But you got to ask yourself, when is the last time? I felt the presence of God. Come on now. When is the last time that there was a fire lit up under me in the spirit? When was the last time I saw transformation? I saw change. Or have I ever seen transformation? Have I ever seen real change? You got to know when the presence of God has left. 
Know when the presence of God has moved on. In that video, in that live stream that I did on my YouTube channel, I want y'all to go watch it. I talked about how God, he gave me a vision and I, and I, and I felt this place, this spirit, this presence where God was not there. He was not there. And when he, and when God is not there, you got to understand when, where, when the, like the Bible talks about, and I put these scriptures in the description on YouTube, when the spirit is not there, when there is no spirit force there, it's dead. The body is dead. Whatever that thing is, is dead. If there is no spirit force there, is it, the spirit is what gives life. This body ain't what gives you life. It's the spirit that is inside of this body. I feel the power of God. It's the spirit that's inside of this body that gives this body life. It illuminates the body. Come on now. And God says that it's the same way with my spirit. It's the same way with my presence. He says, if my presence is not there, if my spirit is not there, he said, there is no life force there. He said, it's dead. It's cold. It's grave. It's like a grave. It's like, it's like the cemetery. It's, it's no life there. It's no vegetation there. It's no growth there. It's just dead. And it's dried up from the root. You got to evaluate your life today, baby. Listen to me. Evaluate your life today. And some of it might hurt because these might be folks and places and things that are very near and dear to your heart. But you have to ask yourself, is there life here? And when I, when I connect with this place or these people or these things, does it give me life? Does it motivate me? Does it encourage me? Does it inspire me to go create something, to go give birth to something? Or do I want to just lay around and not do nothing? Do I start doubting myself because I'm surrounded by people that don't do nothing but doubt they self? I'm surrounded by people that, that never dream, that never have ambition, never have goals. So I don't have no goals. I don't know nothing about writing in no journal, writing my goals down. You know, I'm not around people that do that. God said you in, a, you in the graveyard. You in the graveyard because when you are around the presence of God, the spirit of God is going to empower you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to call forth the leader. That is on the inside of you. Be careful about being in places, baby. Be careful. I, I talked about, I talked about how your humility and your confidence, how they have to dance together. Be careful about being in places where it's always humble, 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 humble yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself. Now you do need humility. You do have to carry that spirit of humility. But be careful about being, a, I, I have been around people, and this is why I tell y'all this, because I have, in my past, I have been around people, and I have been around just in certain places and around in certain environments to where they felt some type of way about me shining in the way that God created me to shine. It's like, oh, but you can do this, but you can't do that. Mm -mm, you can't do that. You can't, mm -mm, uh -uh. we just need you to serve like this. We just need you to do it. Listen, a real leader, when you in the presence of God, when you are, when you are surrounded by the spirit of God, when you are surrounded by kingdom teaching it, now you're going to get lessons on, you're going to get taught on how to be humble, but you also going to be empowered. Y'all listen to me. The spirit of God is going to empower you and it's going to it will not allow you to sit there and blame other folks and blame other things and wait on wait, wait for this and wait for that. Not saying you don't wait on God, you wait on God, but the spirit of God is going to empower you to use the tools that God has put in you. He's already given you everything that you need. Come on now. He put it in you a long time ago. And when you're in the presence of God, it's going to empower you. Them, them gifts that been laying dormant in you that you ain't been doing nothing with, they're going to start stirring up. And they're going to start rising to the surface. And you're going to begin to do things that you never thought you could do. You're going to begin to create things that you never thought you could create. You're going to be going places that you never thought you would go. This is what happens when the spirit of God is present. Because God's spirit is always creating. Ooh. He's create the, the, the God is a creator. That is who he is. So any place that his spirit is, the people that are in that place, they're going to be creating things. Come on now. They're going to be giving birth to things. They're going to be creating products. They're going to be creating services. They're going to be creating messages that's changing people's lives. They don't, whatever they gift is or whatever they call to do, 
They're going to be creating things that are helping people to truly be transformed. Truly be transformed. I'm not talking about that religious hoo-hoo, foo-foo stuff. I'm talking about real life transformation. That's what happens when the spirit of God is present. Don't let what once worked for you hold you back. This word is for somebody today. Come on now. I'm finna go. But y'all listen. Don't let what once worked for you at one point in time, don't let it hold you back from the new thing that God is doing in your life. Don't let what once worked for you keep you stuck and hold you back from your promised land. Know when it is time to pivot. Know when it is time to shift. No, you got to have, you got to have that discernment. And I, I want you to pray and ask God to strengthen your discernment, to sharpen your discernment, to be able to know, oh, God ain't here no more. <laughs> oh, God ain't up in this thing no more. And let me tell y'all something, wherever the Holy Spirit move, you need to be moving right along with him. If you don't discern that he ain't in that thing no more, he ain't in that place no more, don't you be there neither. Because once God done washed his hands with it and God done checked out from it, what you think you going to be able to do? <laughs> Come on now. If I'd have learned these lessons a long time ago, oh we, what you think you're going to be able to do when God says it's finished, it's done, and he done washed his hands, and he done moved on? Why are you still trying to revive something that's dead, that's in the graveyard? Come on now. There is no life there. There is no, no growth there. There is no transformation now. And then you got to be careful because the, the enemy wants you to have, he wants you to get in a spirit where you're casting your pearls to swine. You're casting your pearls to swine. God done moved out of that situation and is dead. It's a, it's a swine place. It's a pig pen, baby. It's a pig stock. But then there you go with your light. And there you go with your growth and your transformation and your good love. And, 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 and there you go with your pearls and, and you giving your pearls to these pigs. And you expecting a pig to take care of your pearls when a pig going to do what's in a pig nature to do. Come on now. Do not cast your pearls before swine. What Jesus told us, he said, do not give what is holy to the dogs. Glory be to God. So you have to evaluate your life today. And you got to say, what areas in my life that I'm giving my, that I could be giving my pearls to swine, meaning that I could be giving energy to something that's not able to reciprocate that back to me is not able to give me that love back on the same level or more than that it's not able to you 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 sharing everything you know you you the one always teaching you always teaching but they ain't got nothing they can teach you they ain't got nothing they can sow into you come on now so you got to be careful he said do not cast your pearls before swine the holy spirit it is a creative spirit. It is an innovative spirit. You're going to know when the spirit of God is present because there's going to be light there. It's going to be vegetation there in the spirit, meaning that it's going to be fruit. It's going to be growth. Everywhere you look, it's going to be growth in some type of way. Remember, I told y'all a few minutes ago, your growth won't look like somebody else's growth. Everybody's growth is different, right? So you, you somebody might lose 50 pounds in six months. But you might have lost five pounds. You still grew. <laughs> Come on now. You still grew. And then it might not be the number. Because I don't know if y'all remember I was telling y'all about that. It's not always the number. Sometimes the number is the last thing that gets the memo that transformation has taken place. Many times your gains are going to come in the spirit first. So you have to focus on the spiritual gains. Meaning what did this teach me? What did this show me about myself? Who is this helping me to become? These are the spiritual gains, the lessons that you learn along the way. And then as you learn the lessons and you become another person, the numbers will take care of themselves. The numbers will be there. But a lot of times the numbers be the last thing to get the memo that you done changed, that you done grew. So don't always just focus on the numbers, baby, because it ain't always just about the numbers. But I want to come on here and give y'all that word, give y'all that message that the Holy Spirit, it is always advancing. Mm. Evaluate today. What areas in your life could use some advancement? What areas in your life 
Come on now. That you can that you need to see growth in, that you ain't seen no growth in in a long time. What areas of your life have plateaued? What areas of your life have been at a standstill? And then you got to ask God, ask him to send his presence, send your Holy Spirit into this area of my life. Because Lord, I know that when your spirit is present, that there is advancement. When your spirit is present, there is growth. When your spirit is present, there is creativity. There is flow. Come on now. Come on now. What people you talking to that still same the conversation conversation still the same. Still the same. They still they ain't talking about nothing new because they ain't learned nothing new. Come on now. The gossip is still the same. They always got the tea. They always got the gossip. And that's all they ever got. They ain't got nothing to help you. They ain't got nothing. And you gotta say, what they bringing me is can what can I do with this? What can I do with this? What can I do with this information that you bring in me? What is it going to do for me? What is it going to do for my spirit? What is it going to do for my bank account? What is it going to do for my business? What is it going to do for my marriage? What is it going to do for my children? How is it going to advance my household? And if you don't see no well that it do, bye. I love you. God bless you and bye. Come on now. Do not get stuck where God used to be. Some of y'all, I'm telling you, you just like how you just like how I was, and you have to evaluate this every season of your life. Every new season, this has to be reevaluated all over again. You got to recalibrate all over again. Take inventory all over again. All right, who am I life now? What's going on now? What we talking about? What they bringing me? What am I bringing them? Don't let what once worked for you hold you back. Don't let what once was a blessing to you, but is no longer that. Don't let it hold you back because God's presence, his spirit is always moving. So you got to make sure you moving with him. You got to make sure every day you get up, you got to be praying. You got to be talking to God. Come on now. You got to get your journal. Got to get your divine one journal. Every day you wake up, listen, you go to you a page, you bought your father's business. You write your daily affirmations. You got your daily affirmations. You got, I am open and receptive to all the good that the Holy Spirit has for me. So you write your affirmation. Look, you got your morning routine. <laughs> Come on now. You got your morning routine. You, you going to your happy place. Because we growing. We advancing. Come on now. You creating stuff. You evolving. You getting your transformation. So every day you get up, you like this. You like this. You got to get you first. Y'all put that in the comments. Say, I got to get me first. All right. Got to get me first. Okay. Get my workout log. Oh, get my water intake. Oh, I, I suppose I've been drunk about the four bottles of water by now. I ain't drunk my water yet. Let me get on, get on my business. And you're going to see that the more you get on your business and you be about the father's business, the less time you have for foolishness, the less time you have for the tea. <laughs> I love y'all so much, baby. I got to get going. I am Latoya O'Kill. Don't get stuck where God used to be. Don't get stuck where he used to be. I have seen some amazing transformations in my life. Amazing transformations in my business. But I have to know when the Holy Spirit is telling me, all right, come on. Come on. Yeah, that was great. That was wonderful. Yeah, it went viral. Yeah, it, it reached this many people, that many people. But if I sit there... Come on now. If I sit there and I keep talking about how y'all know them folks, I, I I used to be the man back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want nobody to give them like I would give them. I was the man back in the day. Okay, but what you doing today? <laughs> what you doing today? Where your fruit at today? Where your transformation at today? What did you learn this week? What did you learn this year? What have you done? What what where is God in your life now? Okay, yeah, you used to be the man back in the day. You was, you was getting it in last week. You were getting it in last month. But what you doing now? So you got to get up every day and recalibrate. You got to get up every day and get you first. You got to get up every day and evaluate your life. The worst place you can find yourself is where God used to be. Don't get stuck where he used to be. Like I said, I've had amazing transformations in my business. I have seen miracle signs and wonders. But if I keep sitting right there, talk, talking about that same miracle, Talking about that same sign, talking about that same wonder, I'm gonna miss the new thing 
that the Holy Spirit is all the way over him. He done moved to a whole nother section. He calling me to create a whole nother kind of product. He calling me to create. You, you got to move. How many businesses went under because they refused to innovate? They refused to, to, to get with what people were looking for now. They refused to get with the new wave. They refused to get with transformation. And they rotted. Their businesses became graveyards. Come on now. The businesses are gone. They ain't even down no more. Somebody else got that space. Somebody else is in that space. Somebody that was willing to be innovative. Somebody that was willing to jump on the wave. Somebody that was willing to move. Somebody that was willing to be creative. And you don't throw away your knowledge and, and what you learn from tradition. and what you, Because there's a space for that as well. Your experience and what tradition has taught you and what your, you know, your history of things. You don't throw that away. You take that with you. But you have to know how to move with the spirit. The Lord says, behold, I will do a new thing. Come on now. And he says, now it shall spring forth, baby. He is doing, I feel the power of God. He is doing it right now as we speak. Don't you get stuck where he used to be. And you miss your moment. You miss your wave. I love y'all so much. Don't forget, we're going to be doing our teaching on September the 27th, Overcoming a Scarcity Mindset, baby. Find that link in my bio or either in my description if you're watching from YouTube. And go ahead and sign up, baby. Okay, that's where the Holy Spirit moving at right now. We're going to be on that Scarcity Mindset 2.0. 2.0 okay and i just put my new my other book that's gonna be in there remember i told y'all it's a series that i'm launching so the next book that's coming is called 21 day mindset makeover when you get into the scarcity mindset course you get the ebook version of that book it's included with your investment in the scarcity mindset course okay so if you already in now get your go on now you're gonna see your ebook copy in there it's 21 days. It's a 21 day devotional to help you break free from a scarcity mindset and to help you walk into the life of abundance that God has for you. Okay. Scarcity mindset is the graveyard. We ain't down no more. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We ain't sitting in no dead place. We ain't sitting in no dry place. We moving into the abundance of God. That's where the Holy Spirit is. We moving into the abundance of God. Glory be to God. You said I can't get it to work because it does not have a code. Um, the 21 day mindset makeover, baby, it's probably not. If, if that's the one you're talking about, I think I'm still waiting. We're still waiting for Amazon to give it uh, a code for you to purchase it. But I know for a fact that the 90 day, the 90 day journal is available. So you can get that one for right now. And then I'll let y'all know. I'll post it on Instagram, send emails out. And let y'all know when the rest of them are ready. Okay. Listen, I was just eager to go on and give birth to that thing. Go on and launch that thing. Just give it a few more days, baby. It's going to be up there. Okay. I love y'all. And I'll check back in with y'all later.